take a few minutes to talk about assignment number three in case you haven't been <coughs> looking at this uh, the assignment is due next week basically today is the fourth it's next week it's due <coughs> and uh, you've been uh, assigned to different working groups and uh, is there someone here from uh, group one yeah. And someone here from group two? Yeah. Anyone here from group three? Okay. Anyone here from group four? Good. So we have some people from each of the groups. That's good. Because <coughs> I just want you to be clear about how you are doing this. And uh, <coughs> since the last time, the last lecture, I added this figure. So it helped make it more clear what you're supposed to do. <coughs> because uh, it seems like uh, you might be interested in your own uh, company, but actually you're a customer of your own company. <coughs> I mean, you're, and uh, what you're really interested in is your report and your presentations are going to be your role as a consultant. And when you're a consultant, you need to know a lot about the other guy's company. So you either have to uh, look at what's there on the website already, or also talk to the people in the other group that have that company, because <coughs> they're basically your customers. So if you have different types of approaches, interviews or whatnot, you need to contact your customers. So <coughs> this is where your work is. You're the consultant to the customer that you're pointing to. And so I don't <coughs> want it to seem too confusing when you have uh, your name is uh, your group and you have this, uh, this uh, name underneath. That's not what you're so focused on. You're actually focused on the arrows. Okay, <coughs> and uh, next week, um, as part of the deliverables, <coughs> you will have a strategy report and design documents and a 10 minute presentation. It's about the report and the design. <coughs> so the documents should be delivered on Fronter, <coughs> but the presentation will be done in class next week. Okay, so <coughs> that's in here. Do you have any questions about that? Okay. Um, today we'll be lecturing about chapter 18, and I didn't present any lecture about. Um, 17 so you should, you should mostly focus on the chapters that are presented when you <coughs> prepare for the exam <coughs> so <coughs> my idea is to use the first part of this lecture period today for chapter 18 and then the second part you can work on your assignments if you like because I think it, there's a lot of work to do by the time it's due next week <coughs> and it might be good to take advantage of people being here from all the groups 
So you can use that. <coughs> okay, so chapter 18 is about the business strategy. And they try to make a connection between the business strategy and what's important about the business strategy and information architecture. And the <coughs> relationship is that uh, these things are not invented in isolation of each other, but that the business strategy will have an impact on the information architecture. And the information architecture will also help drive the business strategy. So um, the business strategy informs how this will be designed, but then as it's being used, your information architecture, <coughs> it will uh, expose gaps in business strategy, maybe find things that are missing, uh, inefficiencies in the business, and that will uh, change the business strategy. And so it's a cyclical process. <coughs> the book doesn't um, specifically say what competitive advantages, <coughs> but um, uh, they do refer to Porter a lot. And uh, one of Porter's definitions for competitive advantage are, is that com competitive advantage grows out of the value of the firm. And that means um, uh, it has to do with what uh, the, uh, the buyer can create. And um, it says the value is what buyers are willing to uh, pay and the superior value st stems from the offerings of lower price than the competitors. So being able to uh, offer the same or better service than the competitors at the same or a lower cost, that's the key. <coughs> and uh, Porter points to two main strategies. One is cost leadership and one is differentiation. So cost leadership is uh, operational effectiveness <coughs> and differentiation is um, uh, being able to offer different types of products or m maybe a b better way of providing customer service, making yourself different from the competitor and being able to do this at the same price as the competitor or um, just uh, or at a lower cost. So this is doing things more effectively than the competitor or being different from the competitor. <coughs> so again, uh, <coughs> the book uh, refers to this um, quote, operational effectiveness means performing similar activities better than the rivals perform them. Operational effectiveness includes, but is not limited to efficiency. So this is basically saying that uh, do what the rivals do, do it better and do it at a lower cost. <coughs> they talk about the concept of alignment. And alignment is about um, how do you align your information architecture with your business strategy. And one way of doing this is to interview the stakeholders, the people that are going to be using your information architecture. <coughs> and you need to ask the questions like, uh, what is the company good at? What is the company bad at? What makes the company different from your competitors? How are you able to beat the competitors? And then how can your website or intranet contribute to the competitive advantage? <coughs> so first you're asking about your company and then you're relating that to how your website is created. <coughs> this chapter talks about strategic fit. And this is um, uh, trying to see how your activities match your business strategy. So uh, this is on, in figure 18.2 in the chapter uh, shows an activity system map for a company that is a uh, mutual funds a uh, financial company that sells sells financial offerings. 
And this is, uh, this is a map of what they do. So they have um, sort of associations between direct distribution and strict cost control, direct distribution and limited advertising budget. So they have themselves created this uh, strategy map. <coughs> and then they try to, then they have a website and the authors say that the website uh, reflects their business strategy because they have um, a very uh, plain approach uh, using plain language and um, very um, uh, clear uh, contribution to shareholder education, for example. So <coughs> uh, you need to look at uh, or have some kind of understanding of what the business's strategy is, business strategy is, and then see how the website and see if it does support their business strategy. <coughs> the business strategy may not be apparent just from an activity systems map, but this is just um, uh, one way of looking at the business strategy, seeing how concepts relate to each other. <coughs> they talk about um, using a <coughs> different strategies for exposing the gaps in the business strategy. What is what can what is needed? What can be improved? And one approach in business is to use a SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So you look at the company's internal strengths and weaknesses and the um, external opportunities and threats. And you see where you can make uh, changes. So you might um, um, you might look for opportunities uh, that um, are an answer to the threats, for example, or you might look at the strengths that are answers to the weaknesses. But <coughs> the book says that uh, this is not the only way to approach a business strategy to find out what, what areas you should be investing in. <coughs> but rather they say that you should look at the uh, the analogy of the elephant and the blind uh, people. And they says that we are the blind people and because we can't see the whole picture, the whole system. And that the elephant is uh, an ana analogy for <coughs> uh, strategy formulation in a business or for the information architecture. So uh, in order to address that the fact that we can't see everything at once, uh, you should use different approaches. So they suggest on page 388 that strategy formulation can come from different types of approaches like um, a process of conception in the design school or a, an analysis process in the positioning school. Uh, the cognitive school is a mental process. So there's, they say there's different ways to come up with a strategy. <coughs> and um, they also point out that the classic information architecture uh, approach is to do something that's top down. So you have prescriptive, some, some organizations saying what you're going to do, and you have the hierarchical structure, and you plan out what you're going to put in the content, and it's very stable and unchanging and centralized. But the modern approach to information architecture is that it's a bottom-up approach. <coughs> it's descriptive, meaning that the con content is um, coming from um, the different parts or the different sources. And it's um, emergent and adaptive and distributive. So it's a different type of uh, approach. And then <coughs> they talk about uh, competitive advantage yet again. And they say that most people focus on the top layers uh, when they try to create a competitive advantage. They want to make uh, differentiated offerings. 
And they do this by maybe branding or positioning themselves in the market, trying to make themselves look different. But the real competitive advantage, uh, the sustainable competitive advantage comes from the bottom up. So <coughs> first look at what is the new opportunities in technology, then look at the business's value chain, and then uh, look at how you can differentiate yourself in the, in the segment of the market. And then <coughs> look at the company's um, <coughs> execution of how they operate and how they implement different um, um, values. <coughs> and then they can offer differentiated offerings. So <coughs> the approach should be more bottom-up. <coughs> <coughs> and this is <coughs> the implication for information architecture is that you should have um, also a bottom-up approach and that is that um, even though the information the information architecture should be mostly invisible and that uh, the interface is what is visible to the customer uh, but the lower layers play a critical role in building the success of the user experience so this is the user experience here and whether it's positive or negative depends on what's below and says so the company um, needs to be able to understand the user needs and behaviors, the content, the structure and the meaning of the content, why you have that, the context, and this is, could be the, bus the business context, what is the culture and the technology. And then built on these understandings, uh, you should have information architecture strategies, which are um, the project plans, what you hope to accomplish with the information architecture. And then built on that, you define metadata and classification schemes in the source. And on top of that, you define what it's actually going to look like, which is the wireframes and the blueprints. And these are things that you're going to be also producing as part of your strategy report and your exercise. So I think. For the, for the next uh, 20 minutes, at least, I want you to think about the company that you are consulting and try to fill in these parts of this triangle. And this will help you, I think, with your exercise, when you actually are doing the exercise, which you'll have time to do in the next hour. But I really want you to uh, think about your your company that you have to consult and see if you can identify the user needs and behaviors, the content, the structure and the meaning, the cultural and the techno the culture and the technology. And what are they like work from the bottom up and see how far you can get up to the top. And then part of your assignment will actually be producing some of these things. So then this will help you get started. Okay. So <coughs> I'll let you start working on this, and if you have any questions, you just we can talk about it. So. <coughs> <coughs>